Hi, I'm Afsha and today I'm going to be showing you my workflow for a really simple scene and lighting setup in Blender for your digital garment. Lighting can either make or break your digital garment, so I hope there are some helpful tips in here for you to achieve that really clean and crisp render. Let's get started. In vStitcher, I'm going to export my garment as an Autodesk FBX file. I'm going to include the avatar, the outside inside textures, and the garment thickness. For the texture size, I use the max, which is, I think, 10,000 pixels. Everything else pretty much stays the same. And then we're going to hit export. In Blender, I'm going to delete my default cube and just get my file ready to render. So, of course, my render engine, I'm going to change it to cycles and using my GPU device. For viewport, I'm going to set the samples to 50 and for the render, I'm going to change that to 150. And then the rest of the settings are just to help my render speed a little bit. So my light paths, the max bounces total, I changed that. I am getting to the habit of changing my fill to transparent just in case I do use an HDRI I don't want it to show in the background for the performance. For tiling I use 256 usually and I check off persistent data. If I was going to do an animation I usually use either 30 or 60 frames per second. And for resolution, depends on what you're using the render for. For Instagram, I usually do 1080 by 1920. And the percentage, I change that to 200, which does double the size of your render, but it gives me higher resolution. And then for the final video export or whatever, I change that back. But for just an image post, you don't need to change it back. And now I'm just updating my camera location to get it ready to be facing that garment when it gets imported in. And I'm creating my collections. I like to keep my avatar and my garment separate as I work so I can hide one or the other. Now we're ready to import our garment in. So we go to File, Import FBX and just browse to where you've saved your FBX file. I'm updating my camera location again now that I have my garment in so I can center that garment and this again depends on just the composition that you want for this one. I want it centered. I also swapped out my avatar because vStitcher will not export the avatar um, with the texture set up correctly. So I just have a workflow for my avatar software that I use. I'm adding in a plane to use for the floor and then we're gonna go into edit mode so I can extrude out a wall backdrop. I also, if you don't want that floor to wall transition to look like that, I'm going to go back into edit mode and just select the edge and bevel it. And we want to increase the number of segments as well so it can have that smooth transition. So if you're going to do like some sort of photography scene with that photography backdrop, this is definitely the setup you would use. I'm going to go to the rendered view. My floor is cutting through the avatar's feet right now, so we want to adjust the location for that. Now I'm selecting my garment texture and we're going to adjust the roughness. So it, I usually always disconnect the roughness map that gets imported in and adjust the roughness manually in, in Blender. I find that I have a better control of how that roughness looks. And sometimes I will also adjust the strength of my normal map too. Now I don't want any light from the world coming in, so I'm just changing the strength to zero on that. 
I only want light from the light setup that I create. I'm going to create a volume scatter using this cube. Um, the reason why I do volume scatters in, in renders like these, if, if I'm rendering a very simple scene and I just want it to look more put together, it helps with that. So I'm scaling the cube and we're going to add that volume scatter material. So connect the volume to the volume. And then you can adjust the density of the volume scatter as needed. We're going to play around with these settings more when we have the final lighting setup done. And I also want to add a floor texture for simple scenes. I find that adding a cool little mirror texture really helps bring the scene together as well. If you don't want your avatar to just look like it's standing on a flat, plain floor. Gives it more dimension, more depth to your render. Now I'm just hiding that point light that was there that I had just to help me set up my textures. And we're going to start adding our official lighting. So for the first one, I'm going to add an area light. I love to use area lights and point lights. I never use the sunlight. I will once in a while use the spotlight, but my go-to are the area and point lights. This one, I'm going to basically add some backlighting to her. You can change the size of the area light and we're going to also adjust the strength of it too. And I'm just pointing this one directly at the avatar. I'm going to move my volume scatter because I don't want it to interact with this light at all. We will set up a light to that will interact with it later. We're going to adjust the strength of this. And I, for ray visibility, I want to go and I want to uncheck volume scatter for this light. I don't want it interacting at all with the, with the volume scatter. And this is nicely lighting the back of her head, giving that a little bit of light to her arms and shoulders. And we're going to duplicate it and add it one below to light up the back of her legs. And since we do have a mirror floor, it's going to reflect that light. And to, again, if you don't want it to interact with that floor material, you want to select the light. And for visibility, turn off glossy. Now we have her backly, nicely backlit. Continue adjusting your volume scatter as needed. We're adding that light that is going to be interacting with that volume scatter because it's right now very dark. And so this is giving it some backlighting to the whole volume scatter. You can increase the, light, uh, the size of it, the strength of it. But now it looks kind of cool, like she's on some sort of stage or whatever. <laughs> and again, adjusting my density as needed. And we're going to bring that point like back to view and I am 
bringing it where I need it to be and then changing it to an area light. And we're really lowering the power on that because a really high power is just going to wash out the textures on my garment and my avatar. And I'm lowering it because maybe sometimes I don't want to show her face or if you're unhappy with how your avatar looks and, but you don't have the time to adjust her facial features then you can just sort of give it that mysterious look of there is a person there but you don't want to show them their face. I actually do that with, you know, quite often if I don't want the main focus to be my avatar and I just want it to be on the garment. I also duplicated my light and added it on the other side to give that drape some some more lighting. And you can go ahead and, and adjust the color of any of the lights if you want to give it some color. Here I'm just playing around with the one that's lighting the volume scatter. I usually will do about between 5 to 10 renders before I find a lighting setup that I like. I Before I... You know, my workflow was very different from the way it was it is now. Um, I would just do a couple of renders, that was it. Um, didn't put too much effort into it, but now I save my renders, compare them all, you go back to any settings that I, I liked that I had changed or... And it's just a workflow that really works much better for me because I can compare what works and what doesn't work and really just satisfy my eye. So I think this is looking good. I noticed, um, I also suggest also always updating your trim textures because sometimes when you export from these 3D fashion softwares, they don't really look metal anymore. So I'm creating a glossy texture for it to make it look like metal, adjusting the roughness so it does bring out that shine. And in these simulations, sometimes the trims don't end up where they should, so I can adjust the location in Blender. And making sure that I um, change the origin point to the geometry, so I have more control of where I am moving that trim. This is much easier to do in the solid view. Um, you can actually see what you're doing, so I suggest doing uh, updates like this in the solid view rather than the rendered view. And this looks good, and I'll just update the other side as well. My avatar is posed with heels and she doesn't have any heels so of course I'm going to just add those heels in. Can't leave her bare foot out here. And lower the floor again because it's cutting through and we're going to hit the render button. Um, it took me about a minute to render this out but of course that highly depends on your own GPU. This is how it looks in the end. Your garment's really nicely lit. Your textures show really well. And that's that. Thanks for watching today. Please like and subscribe.